Okay guys, I am back with another movie review. Um, today I thought I would do Mystery Men. Uh, this movie is actually really good. I always liked it. It came out in 1999. Um, I saw it years ago and I've seen it a few times since. But a friend actually let me borrow this one to watch again because it's been a while since I saw it. And I would actually want to buy this movie just to have it in my collection because I really like it. It's got a great group of actors. They work well together and it just clicks. Um, it sucks that I was looking it up online and apparently it didn't make any money at the box office. It didn't even make its budget. So that's really disappointing. But overall I thought it was a really good movie. I thought um, everybody did a great job in this and it's definitely one that you can watch again so if you haven't seen mystery men I would recommend that to anybody uh, <laughs> it's it basically starts off <clears throat> and you see these criminals and they break into a retirement banquet it's like an old folks home and they're still in their jewelry and their money and the mystery men show up uh, to save the day it basically consists of the blue Raja um, who only throws forks uh, he throws forks and spoons. He refuses to throw knives or anything lethal. He just throws forks and spoons. Um, William H. Macy, who is the shoveler, um, he just uses a shovel. And Ben Stiller, who is Mr. Furious. Uh, he's supposed to be like the hawk where he gets stronger when he gets angry, but no one's ever really seen him do anything with super strength, and he just gets beat up a lot. Um, they start to fight the bad guys and then they start to lose they start to beat each other up the blue Raja throws a fork and hits the shoveler in the ass the shoveler hits Mr. Furious in the face with a shovel so everything kind of falls apart and then Captain Amazing shows up um, he's actually a real superhero he's got a jet pack he's decked out in sponsors like Pepsi and he saves the day and the other guys, they feel horrible. They're like, oh, man, he gets all the credit. And this other guy hands them a business card and says, hey, I make weapons. It'll help you guys out. They kind of just take it and leave. The cops make fun of them. Um, then we see Captain Amazing in the limo. He's arguing with his publicist about losing his Pepsi sponsor. And he decides that they need a supervillain for him to fight. Um, but they're all either dead or in prison except Casanova Frankenstein, who is in a mental institution. So, Captain Amazing decides he's got to get this guy out. So he goes to his hearing, and he's using his secret identity, which is a guy named Lance, which is basically Captain Amazing with glasses on. Um, he has a letter of recommendation from Captain Amazing with him, so they decide to release Casanova Frankenstein from the hospital. Uh, the mystery men are at a diner. Mr. Furious says that Lance is Captain Amazing. The others don't believe him. They say, but Lance has glasses. Uh, it's just really funny. They see a group of supervillains, the Disco Boys, and Mr. Furious wants to follow them. Uh, the other guys just want to go home. Uh, the Shoveler has a wife. And so Mr. Furious goes off on his own to spy on these guys. We see Casanova and his psychiatrist from the hospital there. She's working for him now. Um and he's kind of uh, just doing his own thing trying to get his gang back together the disco boys are working for him again and he blows up the mental institution so he blows it up and all of a sudden uh, Captain Amazing shows up meanwhile Mr. Furious is watching all of this so Captain Amazing shows up they know each other so well he says take off the laser on your finger take off the poison darts in your slippers Casanova does all this but then he ends up tricking Captain Amazing and he sprays him in the face with this poison mist that knocks him out. So he captures Captain Amazing. Mr. Furious goes to work the next day because he didn't see him get captured. He just saw him show up. And he works at a junkyard. He junks items. And the lady tells him to go junk this giant steel bus thing. But he says he can't. It's, in, it's uh, indestructible. And while he's out there trying to bust this thing up, he hears on the radio that Lance has gone missing. And they can't find Captain Amazing. So we see Captain Amazing, he's tied to a chair with his laser pointed at his head in Casanova's lair. Um, the mystery men show up to Casanova's to save him, but they get beat up by the Disco Boys. So they realize they can't fight these guys. 
they need help, so they decide to hold tryouts to even the odds a little and recruit some new superheroes to the group. Um, and there's also a guy named the Mysterious Sphinx who they want to find. He can supposedly cut guns in half with his mind. So they're going out to look for these superheroes. They meet the Invisible Boy, who is Kel Mitchell from Keenan and Kel, and all that. And he can turn invisible, but only if no one is watching, including himself. So there's really no way to even know if he can do this. Uh, but they give in because he has a dream, and so they let him join. They go back to the diner, and they run into the spleen, who is Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. And they don't like him. He's annoying. Uh, apparently his power is he was cursed by a gypsy to have this horrible farting power. Um, he demonstrates his power, and everyone in the diner faints. So he kind of goes along with the group. They just kind of let him follow them around. They hold the tryouts. They get a bunch of like ragtag, horrible guys. Like Dane Cook shows up as the waffler. His power is he has a waffle iron. Um, Pencil Head and Pencil Sun, Ballerina Man, just a bunch of horrible um, characters. They don't find anyone, and then the bowler shows up, Janine Garofalo. She throws a <clears throat> bowling ball, which has a skull in it, which was her, which is her father, the original bowler. So the bowler joins the group because she's got a great power. They like her. She's strong. Um, so the six of them head out, and they spot Casanova's limo. So they go up to the limo, they lock Casanova and the Disco Boys in the limo. Um, one of the Disco Boys says that he's the guy who killed the bowler's father. They start to beat up the limo, they smash the doors, they scratch, the Raja scratches it with his fork. Um, Mr. Furious jumps on the roof and starts pounding on the top of the limo. Uh, the spleen farts inside, and then the bowler just breaks the windows with the bowling ball. Um, this was a great scene here. They all go off to celebrate their little victory over Casanova and they get drunk and then the disco boys show up when they're leaving the bar. Uh, they ha they pull guns, they're about to kill him and then the Sphinx shows up, cuts the guns in half and they all escape. He agrees to train them, he talks in these weird riddles and he's really mysterious. Uh, they get better though and they start to make new costumes and then Mr. Furious gets really mad at the Sphinx because of his sayings like don't uh, you cannot let rage become your master, so you must master your rage. And it's just stuff like that all the time. And Mr. Furious says, you can't go up unless you go down. You can't go left unless you go right. And just stuff like that. And this was really funny. So he gets mad, and he eventually leaves the group. So to replace Mr. Furious, they decide to go get some weapons. Um, the shoveler remembers the guy who gave him the business card from the old folks home. And it's Tom Waits. Uh, he specializes in non-lethal weapons, though, um, like canned tornado grenades, uh, the clothes shrinker, um, the blame thrower, which causes people to argue at each other. And Mr. Furious, meanwhile, goes back to the diner. He walks the waitress home, uh, who he has this crush on, and she finally agrees to go out with him. So he walks her home. Meanwhile, the disco boys are spying on him. So the mystery men decide to get up and go to save Captain Amazing. And Mr. Furious shows back up and rejoins the team. Uh, Casanova's holding a party. He's got all these different gangs there. He's got the Disco Boys, the Susies, uh, the Suits, who are like mobsters, the Frat Boys, um, the Not-So-Goody Mob with CeeLo, and the Furriers. <clears throat> So the mystery men, while all these gangs are having a big party, they sneak in the back and they find Captain Amazing. They try to save him, but they accidentally pull the wrong lever and they kill him. This machine comes on and kind of turns him inside out. So Casanova goes to show the gangs that he has caught Captain Amazing, but he finds he's already dead, and then he finds a fork and realizes it's the mystery men. Um, they retreat. The mystery men retreat. And the shoveler gives them all a motivational speech. They decide that they have to save the city, so they all go off to prepare. The Blue Raja goes home and he gets uh, his mother's special silverware, tells her who he really is. Mr. Furious goes and tells the waitress his real name, and she says, Just be Roy. Don't be Mr. Furious. Um, then Tom Waits fixes up the bus from the junkyard and he puts this big magnet on top of it. 
Uh, they put on their new costumes and they go to Casanova's. Mr. Furious starts to doubt his powers because of the waitress and the others try to convince him that he does have his powers. They crash through the mansion and they use the magnet to steal all the guns from the gangs. Uh, the gangs retreat and Casanova turns on this laser device that will kill anyone who approaches it. Um, anyone who approaches the disco room. Uh, so Invisible Boy actually uses his powers. The others turn away, they don't watch him, and he turns invisible and he cuts the machine off. So he does have powers. They use the shrink gun to stop the furriers and they use the blame thrower to stop the not so goody mob. Uh, the shoveler takes out half the disco boys by himself and the spleen gets shot in the ass and takes out the Susies. The bowler um, confronts the disco boy, the last disco boy who killed her father, and she says that she's not going to kill him her dad is. The bowling ball comes alive and kills the last disco boy. Um, Casanova has the waitress, um, Mr. Furious's uh, love interest, and he uses this electrical um, like railing on the stairs to kill the frat boys. He kills his own men and that way no one can get to him. And he's at the top of the stairs but Mr. Furious climbs up uh, the Blue Raja's forks to get to him. They start to have a fight. Uh, Casanova Frankenstein fights with these like sharpened pinky nails. He just kind of charges at him. And they have this big fight. Mr. Furious goes crazy. He beats his ass, throws him into the machine. He gets turned inside out. The machine's going off. It's going to destroy the city. So they use the bowler's ball to shut off the machine, saving it in time. Uh, and then we see the news. They show up on the news. And the mystery men want to thank the other guys like themselves who... No one cares about, no one thanks, and then they kind of start arguing about the group name, and then the bowler's ball returns to her bag, and she says, yeah, we know, you saved the day. Uh, and that was it, really. That was the whole movie, but like I said, there's so much good stuff in here, so many funny parts. You really just have to see it. Um, if you've already seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's really funny, and if you haven't, you should definitely check it out. Um, you could probably find this movie for like five bucks or find it online or something, but I'm sure Netflix has it. So, yeah, I would definitely check this out because it is a great movie and it's kind of just a goofy superhero comedy type. So, definitely, I recommend this movie. So, that's my movie review for today. I hope you guys like it. And I will be back um, tomorrow to do uh, Leprechaun 2. So, I hope you guys check that out. And thanks for watching. Bye.